Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. Today I'm at Broad Lane Leisure and I'm going to be reviewing this. It's the Coachman Lusso. Now I've really wanted to review this since it came out last summer, but I haven't been able to get my hands on one. So I'm really excited to be able to have a look at it. And why am I so excited? Well, this caravan is priced at £40,455. To my knowledge, that is the most expensive caravan from any UK manufacturer. So what I want to know is, why is it costing so much and is it actually worth that huge, huge price tag? So today, together, we're going to find out the answer to that question. So if you're interested in Lusso or you just want to have a nosy at one, let's have a look first at some facts and figures. So this caravan, it is on a twin axle. It's a four berth. In terms of its size, it's eight feet in width, and as we can see, it's got a huge front. In terms of length, it's seven meters and 89 centimeters, which is 25 feet and 11 inches. And that all important weight, it has an MTPLM of 1,960 kilograms, which is huge. It's going to give you a payload of 160 kilograms. Now you can upplate the Lusso to 2,000 kilograms or two tons, and that'll give you a further 40 kilograms, taking your payload up to 200 kilos. For me personally, if I was buying one, I certainly would up plate to 2,000 kilos. Because if you're already looking at this caravan, chances are you're going to have a tow car that's going to be able to take that weight. So that extra 40 kilos will be really important. And I'll explain why. Because although the Lusso is all already really well kitted out, the one thing it's not got within its current weight is the motor mover and it hasn't got an air conditioning unit. And for me, if you are going to be spending just over £40,000, those are certainly two things you're going to want to be fitting. So I would certainly be thinking, go for that maximum payload and go for the 2,000 kilo MTPLM. So back to the front. The Lusso it is on the Alco chassis and on the hitch, we're going to have a nose weight of 100 kilograms. I'm quite surprised by that because for a, a caravan of such weight, I'd have expected that to have gone all the way up to 150. But the good thing about it being 100 is it makes it much more uh, usable on more tow vehicles that might have a lower nose weight limit. So that's a really good feature. We're also going to get a standard, the Alco ATC. That's the anti-snaking device. And we're also going to get the Alco Premium Brake, also known as the AAA, and that's a, an advanced braking system. If we look at the front of the coachman, I must say, I am quite taken by the front. As standard, we've got the logo, and then we've got the front lockers. We're going to keep our gas in this one here. They're only small, but you'll still get bits in them. But I really do like this big front. It seems quite bulbous is probably the best way to describe it. And I, I personally like that. You can see the huge size with it being eight feet wide. The windows come a good way across the caravan and we get the huge coachman sunroof. So when you go inside, you're going to get the daylight coming in. Up on the roof, now we can't see up there obviously at the moment, but we're going to get a 100 watt solar panel. So a solar panel is great for keeping the battery topped up, especially when we've got the caravan in storage and you've got your alarm or something that might be having a small drain on your leisure battery. It also means that if you do want to stay on a site with electric, without electric hookup, then you are going to be able to top up your leisure battery. Also on the roof, a standard, is Wi-Fi. So this caravan's going to come with its own Wi-Fi system. You will get a SIM card and you, I would imagine you're going to have pay to keep that topped up. But to have it already installed, the Wi-Fi, I think that's a great feature. So that's what we're going to find up there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to head down the near side of the caravan and take a look at the features that we're going to find on the near side of the Lusso. So we'll come down next to the near side. Now, first of all, we're going to find the privacy windows that we've got all round. So we've got tinted windows and then we've got the Lusso decals or exterior graphics. And these stretch all the way down and we'll see as well the Lusso badge in the silver, which I like. And I do like how the whole band goes the full way down the side. The sides are white. They're not coloured like they are on the laser. So we've got the full white sides and the front and rear in the white but nice exterior graphics, think they're quite striking. 
down here, now underneath, what we'll find is the EMP hydraulic self-leveling system. And this is an excellent feature. This alone is a £3,000 option if you were to buy it separately on a caravan. So that obviously does account for some of the price of the Luso. And the self-leveling, the idea is when you arrive on site, you press a button and this caravan will automatically level itself. It's also a really good feature for if you're wanting to fit Alco wheel locks to the twin axle of the Luso, but I'll come to that as we move further down. So that's the EMP hydraulic self-leveling system. What we're going to find next is here, we're going to find the external whale gas barbecue point. And that to me is a necessity on the caravan. If you're barbecuing outside, you need an external gas point. So we do find that here on the front near side. And next to it, we're also going to find a 230 volt three pin plug. So if you were wanting to say, plug a television in outside in the awning or charge electric bikes, or you've got things that you need to charge externally, you can plug them in here. Next, we're going to get a small locker just under the front seat here and the access is there. And then we'll move along to the door. Now it's a one piece door, not a stable door. We do get the window so we can look out to see who's outside our caravan and keep an eye on what's going on in the awning. And we've got an LED light there above the door. So on a night we can find our way back nice and safely. As we come down, we've got the vents for the Dometic tower fridge and freezer. Again, we'll see that inside, that is absolutely huge. And then we find we've got the twin axle alloy wheels and these are 14 inches. The Luso does come with two Alco wheel locks. So the receivers are on those and that used with the self-leveling, they'll be quite easy to apply. The Luso does come with a steel wheel as a spare for if you do unfortunately have a puncture and that's underslung as well. Just finishing off down here on the near side, we're going to get a window, good size window, and that overlooks the bed which we're going to see when we go inside. And that really summarises this near side of the caravan. So what we'll do next is we'll go around the back and just have a look at what we're getting back there. So around at the back, unfortunately, we do have a, a pillar here, so we can't fully see it, but we've got the big eight foot wide rear. It's a one piece white, comes down to the light cluster. And one feature we're going to find are the white grab handles, and that's just to make it all one color. We do have a high brake light in the middle there, the coachman name, and then we get a coachman logo badge. So that's the rear, it's large, it's white, and it's completely functional. What I'm going to do next is make my way around and we'll have a look at what we're getting on the off side of the Luso. So I'm going to make my way down the off side next. First of all, we can see the vent here for the Alder wet central heating because we do get that as standard on the Luso. Then we're going to find our water points. Now we've got the whale water point connection for your pump. So if you've got your Aquarol, you can fit it here and bring water into the Luso. It's really important to mention that the Luso does have an onboard fresh water tank and that's going to take 36 litres of water. So you're going to be able to fill that and have your Aquarol, so you're going to have plenty of water. You're also going to get an external shower as well. So if you wanted a cold water shower to wash off your pedal bikes or your shoes or your dogs, then that's going to be a brilliant feature for you. I'll just move a bit further down and we're going to find a locker box. And this is where we're going to hook our electric hookup cable, as you can see here. So this is where we're going to be hooking up. We do have one window into the lounge area as well. And then we'll make our way down. Now, just up here, you'll see a service light on the off side here. Now you may wonder why you want a light on the off side of the caravan. If you arrive on a night time, late on an evening on site and you have to come around here to hook up your electric or hook up your water believe me that led light up there is going to be an absolute bonus because i'm sure we've all been out with head torches or uh, messing about in the dark and it's not gone very well so we've already got a service light there the next thing we're going to find is this really 
good size panoramic window and this window overlooks in the kitchen and it's not until we're actually going inside that you're going to see the full benefit of that but that's the kitchen window. The exterior graphics are obviously the same on the offside and we've got that really nice silver Lusso badge as well there. We've then got our offside two wheels and then as we come back we're just going to find locker storage here now this storage, it's not overly wide, but you probably could slide some chairs under there and that's going to give you storage under the transverse island bed. Again, we'll see that when we go in. So not overly wide, but storage nonetheless. And then last but not least, we're going to find our toilet cassette. We're going to find the flush filler. It is an external flush filler here and we're going to find the window into the bathroom. Now this again is part of one of the tinted windows that we've got all around. So you can't see in anyway, but this is frosted glass as well. So you don't have to worry about that. I always like uh, frosted glass um, on the bathroom windows. So that's the exterior of the Lusso. Um, what we'll do next, we'll go inside because this is where the Lusso really does deliver. And I'm quite excited to get in there and show you it. So come on. Let's go inside. So we come into the Lusso and we'll start in the lounge, which is where I always like to start. The first thing we notice is it is quite dark. There's a dark wood trim. We've got dark fabrics here. So it does have quite a dark feel, but there's certainly a lot of lighting to illuminate it. And it's got quite a luxurious feel, I'll say that. So we'll start first of all with these furnishings. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is we've got an amazing wraparound lounge area. So it comes the full way around and it even extends round here. So this is four berths. So if there's four of you, there's going to be plenty of places to sit. You'll find that we lose the front chest here. We don't have that, but we do have this additional seating cushion. And I really like these high backed uh, sofa cushions. You can see on that one there. The color scheme, we're going to get cushions with this sort of diamondy effect and there's also a second effect as well in the cushions so you're going to get four scatter cushions with slightly different uh, fabrics the curtains are a gray color and i think it all works well together it's interesting to see this wraparound lounge because you don't often see that on uk vans it is more for the european market and what i will say is you're also getting this table now, this table is fixed, it's multi-directional, and by that, I mean it will pull in various direc directions and backwards and forwards, so you can get in. I'm going to be honest about what I think about this. Um, I think there's a lot of European influence here, especially with this layout and this table. I really like this. But the only issue I think people may have is on a night when you're wanting to relax, it's what are you doing with this table? Because you are going to have to move it to get in and out, as you can see. I think what I would like to have seen, having looked at it, is maybe a table that folds over like you can get on a motorhome. And that would certainly give you more space to manoeuvre. It'd be nice as well then to drop the table down and have this more as a coffee table. So if it could fold and drop and be used as a coffee table, that to me would be a really nice feature. So maybe that's something that might come in the future. I don't know. But in terms of this lounge space, I, I do really like this. This is, this is a lovely lounge area. So what else are we going to get apart from this wraparound cozy sofa? Well, we're going to get behind me here a wireless mobile phone charger. We're going to get various LED lights that are around us. And as you can see, we've got Pioneer speakers. Now the sound system in the coachman, we've got Pioneer speakers in the front and we're going to find speakers in the bedroom. And up here, there's a DAB Bluetooth Pioneer system as well. So we're going to be able to listen to music throughout the caravan. As well as that, we've got the three coachman windows and then the huge sunroof. I really like this feature and it does have a blind. We find blinds throughout the caravan. We've got the concertina blinds that pull down. So they're going to give nice privacy on an evening. So a nice finish in the silver there. And as I say, they've got that in that large sunroof there. What I'll do is I'll just slide the table and stand up. 
So storage in the, the front here, we've got a small cupboard here. We've got the same on each side, on the near side and the off side, but there's a small storage cupboard there next to where we're going to find the radio. We're then going to find a second cupboard with shelf and a further cupboard where we're going to find the aerial. So the fitted aerial is going to feed into this cupboard and then we're going to connect up the television. There are a couple of television points and they also have satellite as well. So if you are wanting to fit satellite or connect into satellite, then you'll have that option too. So that's that side. I'll just move the table and come round. So what we'll do next is we'll just take a look above the door because we've got some control panels here. So once you come inside the door, we're going to find a control for the Alderwet central heating and we're going to find the control for the coachman itself. So the Luso has got a control panel and as you can see, we're going to be able to operate our lights, our water and various features on the caravan. So it's all there as you step straight in the door. Next to where we come in through the door is where we're going to find a place for the television. Now we've got two sockets and then we've got our television aerial and the satellite and we've got two USBs as well so that's always handy and then we've got this small area here and we've got a bracket on the wall ready to fit a television if you want one on the bracket or you could always just put it on the stand here and there's a little bit of storage just underneath as we come in so you can put items there. We've also got these small shelves and I must say I, I sometimes wonder what these are for things like this because they've not got a massive amount of depth so not entirely sure what you'd place on there. Maybe something else could have been put in that space instead. I don't know, maybe a mirror or something would be useful there. So you've got a mirror near to the door. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn around and we're going to move into the kitchen because I really do like this kitchen on the Luso. So I'll see you in the kitchen. So here we are, we're in the kitchen area, which is on the off side of the Luso. And we've got this wonderful L shape. And I really like, first of all, the worktop. Now this is a pebble color and it's a Corian worktop. And you can see with it coming out here, and this is the benefit of an eight foot wide caravan. You can pull things out further into the center of the caravan without losing space to walk through. So it's absolutely huge. And it comes all the way around here. We've got a few bits set out today, but it gives you an idea. And I find this is a nice place just to even stand and do food preparation not that I do a lot of that but yeah excellent we've got two plug sockets as well ideal for the coffee machine toaster and kettle and there's certainly a lot of room to put those out as well and what I'll do is I'll just move down first of all to this part of the kitchen now as you can see there's quite a lot of nice under lighting and if I open this cupboard this gives us an absolutely excellent rack so you can pull this rack out and it's absolutely huge. It's a couple of feet in length and it's nearly a foot in width. So excellent for storage. And one thing I do like is the fact that you're not having to bend down into that cupboard. You can just pull that rack out. You can also access it from the side I'm at here as well. So you can open a further cupboard and just reach in as well to get bits out from the lower part. So that's really nice. As we continue to move round, when I was outside, I told you about the panoramic window and here we can really see how that works. Some really nice lighting underneath. We have got a blind for privacy and if we pull down further, we do obviously get the fly screens all round in case you were wondering, but absolutely lovely. That's going to give you a lovely outlook if you're on a nice site. We also find this marble effect splashback and that complements this Corian really nicely. So the kitchen area here, I find really appealing. We'll go up into the cupboard. Now the cupboard, it's a white uh, finish and it does have Luso above as well, just to remind you. And it's got quite a nice mechanism, a mechanism I've not seen in a caravan before. It's a slide out there on that hinge. And then we've got loads of room in here got room for a couple of plates. I'd probably maybe want to fit something extra in there for more plates maybe. And then we've got somewhere to put our mugs or our glasses there. And again, this just slides back down and that's really nice. 
again, we've got some lighting up here just to illuminate it. So as we just move along this direction, we have an absolutely huge sink. It's a really good depth as well. So this is excellent. And the swivel tap as well. I do like this style of tap that Coachman uses. So as we continue along, we're going to find the Thetford gas oven and grill. And this is a fan assisted gas oven as well. So that's hopefully going to improve it greatly. It is at a really good height as well. That's a nice height there. We've got the two shelves, good size. We've got the grill above. So ideal for toast or anything like that. And then underneath, we've got the glass protector on top. But then we're going to find an electric plate and we're going to find three gas burners. So that's ideal whether you're on electric hookup or whether you're off grid. So it, is, it does appear very robust. It's probably the most robust oven I've seen in a caravan in some time. So that's really nice. Uh, just under here, we do have an extractor fan. And again, not something we see usually on caravans, more so on motorhomes. And it does come with a light and then you can turn the fan up. I don't know if you can hear that. So that's the extractor fan. Really good feature again, getting the smells out of the caravan. Above it, we're going to find a microwave. So if I open that up, it's a Russell Hobbs microwave. Um, it's a reasonable depth, although not massive on the height there, but a very deep microwave, 800 watts. The only thing is I do find that is quite high for someone small like me. Um, it's a little bit high and again it is situated above the oven so if you're using the gas burners cooking do be careful if you're using the microwave at the same time. Moving back now down here to the storage now we've got a nice pull out drawer here these feel really quite robust I do like these and we're, they've got some illumination there. The second drawer now, I'm a little bit confused if I'm absolutely honest, because in this second drawer is where I find a cutlery tray. Um, and there's also a divider within this drawer, which suggests this is the cutlery drawer. Um, and for me, I, I honestly would prefer it here at a better height for me, as opposed to bending down, because cutlery is the, the most sort of usable part of what you're going to be using here. And I'd probably be using that that drawer quite a lot. And then down here, I like this bottom drawer. It's nice to see it's not just a flap. It is actually a drawer. So that comes out nicely. And then under the oven, we've got a drop down and there's a little bit of storage there. Um, not a lot. There's a couple of other bits of part of your um, appliances under there. So that's that. Right. So that really summarises this part of the kitchen area on the Lusso. And I must say, in terms of kitchens and caravans, this is really nice. Apart from this little bit of confusion over the cutlery tray, um, I do like this. This is a very nice kitchen, loads of worktop space. Um, other than that, I can't really fault this. This is lovely. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to head over onto the near side and we'll just take a look at the huge fridge and freezer. So over here on the near side, now, first of all, above me, we've got a huge sunroof, which I think is going to be excellent for bringing light into the caravan. It's absolutely massive. And that works really well with the headroom, which is six foot five in the coachman. So even if you're tall, you're going to have plenty of room. And I think that does add to how spacious it feels in here. So we come over now. This is the Dometic fridge and freezer, and this is 177 litres altogether, which that's absolutely huge. And I really like a big one. So first of all, we've got a freezer compartment that is massive. So if you were away for a week or two, or even if you were planning on using this caravan on a seasonal pitch and you were wanting, obviously, to fill this with food, it's absolutely ideal. And it is the two way opening as well. So it will open both ways. And that goes the same for the fridge. And don't forget this appliance will run obviously on electric and gas. So within here, now this is the fridge and it's absolutely massive again. We've got the various shelves here. We've got shelves internally. And then down here, 
we've got a salad tray and you can change the temperature in the salad tray so you don't freeze your lettuce to death which is always an advantage so yeah I do really like this uh, and as I say with it opening both ways it works well depending on where people are stood in the kitchen so yeah absolutely brilliant so that's the Dometic fridge and freezer we've got a little bit of storage just up here above it again if you're short it, you're probably not going to use that much but otherwise that's great for taller members of the family to put bits in there and just close that up and that's really summarising the kitchen. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to move back into the bedroom. So let's make a start on the bedroom. And first of all, the thing I've noticed, and I have seen a number of people comment about this um, online, is that there's no privacy curtain dividing this kitchen living space from the bedroom. And I think that's a, it is a little bit strange because normally I would have expected a privacy screen to be able to pull across here particularly if you are using this as a foreberth and you've made the bed up at the front you may well be wanting some privacy from those other people but otherwise if you're wanting to get changed in the bedroom you're going to have to either draw all the blinds or you are going to have to make your way into the bathroom so I'm a little bit unsure why why that hasn't happened um, it's also worth noting one thing I sort of notice is that with having the um, hob here so if I was cooking on the hob there is a obviously a splash back here but we are quite close to the bed as well um, just to be thinking about the cooking and what have you so that's the only thing I've noticed about that there's a good size um, uh, space here that I do like this is nice and open here so if you were getting changed on a morning there's plenty of room to get dressed talking about our storage we're going to start here so this is the near side of the caravan and here we're going to find this sort of all-in-one wardrobe space if I open that up now although we've got lights here we do have a light as well in this cupboard so it is illuminated in the wardrobe space the Alderwet central heating uh, tank is going to be found in here but we don't lose much space to that We've got a rail for hanging our clothes and there's a good amount of space to be honest. The cupboard below opens up and we can see we can get in there as well. There's a little bit of intrusion down at the bottom that looks like the wheel arch there so we lose a little bit of our storage space there. But then coming across we're going to find some drawers so they're a good size they're nice and deep as well because obviously it goes all the way back and I do like this little finish uh, on the Lusso these are quite good so three of those drawers that one only comes out a little way so be careful with that one so yeah that's the storage there and then I'm going to move over and look at what we're getting here at this side of the bed so as we come round we're going to see um, first of all we've got storage lockers I'll start up here so above the bed we've got a number of storage lockers and these are a little bit different because we've got an open space in this one and then we see we've got a shelving unit in this one and that goes along there so we have got some locker storage again it's that nice dark wood in there continuing the theme there we go now as we come along you'll notice we've got these spotlights and these have got USB chargers and they've got two settings as well so you can have them on, have them on this small little dimmed bit or if you tap them again they fully illuminate so that's quite nice on a night you can have subtle lighting. We come down now I do like these this is a really nice space here so you can be charging your gadget there you've also got a, a, a little space there to put your phone or you could bring it on down here great for cups of tea and what have you in bed we've got a mirror here I think that's more to to create maybe a bit of space that sort of illusion of space here because unless you squat down you can't see yourself in the mirror so um, it's not overly practical but then here we're going to find some more drawer space and this is the same on both sides of the bed so that's the first drawer and then the other one's just a little bit lower down but again the same the same size 
So some nice drawer space there. So storage wise, yeah, it's perfectly usable for probably up to a two week holiday. Um, what I'm going to do now is move on to the bed. Now the bed, this is quite interesting. If we look at the bed, first of all, we've got this really nice headboard, which is a leather effect headboard, and we do have some backlighting as well. In terms of the size of this island bed, now this bed will retract. It's currently pulled out, it's extended. So this is obviously for on the night time. And when you pull it out like this, it's six foot two in length. So bear that in mind if you're a tall person, because with it being an island bed, you do lose some here as well. So it's six foot two. And in terms of the width of the bed, it's four foot six in width. So it is a double bed. Now, when you have it out in this position, you can still walk around uh, the bed. It's not too much of an issue. Obviously, when you uh, retract it, there's considerably more room for getting around. Now, it might be a bit contentious, and I'm sure you've got your own opinion. You can let me know in the comments. But for me, if I'm spending four, just over 40,000 on a bed, um, as a lady who's not very strong, and I must say my back is not great, I think a really nice feature that could have been added to this bed would have been if it was uh, electric, if there'd have been a button to press to extend this bed out, I think that would have been a really nice feature for £40,000. Um, tell me what you think, you, you might think it's a ridiculous idea, but personally I just think it would have been a nice feature and, and maybe what you could have done then is you'd be more likely to put it away um, if it was electric and you could have then maybe had it slightly longer. You could have gained a few more few more inches on the bed. I don't know, it's just an idea. Um, but yeah, so that is the bed. Otherwise, yeah, good size um, transverse island bed. Now I'll just move around. So we have got Alderwet central heating, as I've said, um, and we've got the radiator vents along this side. And there are some just under the headboard of the bed as well. So you're going to be lovely and warm on a night time. Now here is the window that we saw when we were outside. And this window is covered with this um, net. I'll just lift that up though. So you, if you did want to slide this back, you would have the nice window to look out with your cup of tea. But otherwise, this net comes as standard. And I think that adds some really nice privacy. It softens this room up a little bit, really. And then we've got, obviously, the, the top here with some lighting underneath. If you're worried about sort of the light within the room, it is well lit. But above the bed, there's also a large sunroof. So on a morning, it's going to let in some nice light. You can open that up for fresh air as well. So that's a good size. What we'll do now is we'll just move around and have a closer look at the bits that are over here in this corner. So here in this corner, we're going to find a little bit more storage down there. We've got this really good sized mirror with light above it. We've got a plug socket. So if you're wanting to use a hairdryer, hair straighteners or something like that, you can use that in this mirror. And then we've got a TV point as well. So you could maybe have a television on a small stand there. So that really is the bedroom space. It is a nice bedroom. It's certainly got all the storage that you're going to want. So what I'm going to do now is head into the bathroom. Now the bathrooms on the Coachman's are generally where they always deliver. So let's go and have a look in here. So we've come into the rear washroom and we do have a sliding door for privacy. It's a nice solid door and situated on this door, we have got a hook for a towel. As we come into the washroom, we notice we've got some storage there. That's not very deep. I think that's probably more likely to be for something like toilet rolls or some small toiletries. We've got some hooks, which I do like to see, and they're situated just above the heated towel rail. And you can also obviously put your towels on there as well, keep them nice and warm. We've then got a window, that's got a blind inside, which is just under here, so you can pull your blind down. And it's also got that frosted glass so people can't see in. We find the Thetford Swivel Toilets down here in this side. And then as I move round, we have got toilet roll holder and then we move into the sink area now the sink is in the center it's a really good size again we've got a really good tap here that we see in the kitchen I like these 
and then we've got the fruit bowl sink. Now this is always controversial. I like fruit bowl sinks. A lot of people don't. And I think it's because if you're washing your face or you're shaving, you've got a small space to aim for there. But personally, I really like these. So that is nice. We've got this really good size mirror as well, which again, creates more space. We've got the toothbrush holder as well. And then We've got some good storage under here for our toiletries, as you can see under there. So storage isn't a problem. Last but not least, we've got the shower. Now the shower's situated here on the near side. And I must say, this is a good size shower cubicle. It does give you around six foot two in height, but there's also a shelf in there for your shower gels. And then we've got the single plug in the bottom. The screen is clear glass, it's not frosted, so just bear that in mind for your privacy. But otherwise, a good size shower, and I do like the marble effect on the wall as well. So that is the washroom back here. What I'm going to do is head back into the lounge and just do a summary of the Luso and talk over what I've seen and the things that you might want to think about if you're considering buying a Luso. I'll see you in the lounge. So there we have it, that is the Coachman Luso, which as I say at £40,455 is a considerable amount of money to spend on a caravan. Should you buy one? Well that's a good question and that's only for you to answer. What I've found is this caravan is very appealing, it's got quite a European feel and that might not appeal to everybody. I do particularly like this wraparound lounge, although even for me who likes European caravans, I'm not sure how well this table works for when you're wanting to relax on an evening. What I will say though is the kitchen is phenomenal. That has really delivered, apart from the cutlery tray, which I think is in the wrong drawer. But other than that, I really like that Corian worktop and the L shape and the huge fridge and freezer. The bed, the bed is a good size. No problems with that unless you are particularly tall. As I say though, for this sort of money, I would rather have had an electric bed as opposed to one that I'm going to be having to pull in and out every morning. The washroom's very nice. I've certainly got no complaints about that. And overall, this caravan is very well equipped. I'd say if you're considering buying something like the Coachman Laser, which is at around £37,000, I'd consider pushing the budget a little bit further to Luso money. And that's simply because I do think this has a higher feeling of luxury. I do think this lounge is lovely and the kitchen. So for me, I would probably would opt for this over the choice of the laser. Would I spend £40,000 on a touring caravan? To be honest, I wouldn't. Um, but there will be people that have got that money to spend. They want to be seen with a Luso because to let's be fair, when you arrive on site, people that know are going to know that this is a £40,000 caravan. And if you're happy to spend that, then go for it because seriously, there is nothing wrong with this caravan whatsoever. If you are looking at spending though, £40,000 or more, there is another caravan that might be worth considering. And that's something like the Inos, which again is a handmade caravan. So there are other options available. With the European feel to this caravan as well, it might even be worth looking at hobbies. Yes, the door's on the wrong side, but to be fair, they're offering you a lot of the sort of feel that you would get in this sort of European feeling caravans. So those are just some suggestions. Will this compete with the likes of the Buccaneer and obviously the the sibling laser. Yes, of course it will. This, this is a beautiful caravan. I absolutely uh, can't say anything other, but maybe Coachman having launched it and had some feedback or consider the table and the privacy screen and things like that. Maybe they'll even change the cutlery drawer for me and put in an electric bed, I don't know. But yeah, so that is the Coachman Luso. I have enjoyed having a look around. I've not been disappointed. Um, it's been worth having a look and I'm sure there will be buyers for this caravan. Hopefully you've enjoyed having a nosy around as well to see what £40,000 is going to get you. So there we have it. I'd just like to say thank you to Broad Lane Leisure who've allowed us to come and film. And at the time of filming, we are abiding by the COVID guidelines as well. I'd just like to say, as always,
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.